Chinese nationals are celebrating the death of Shinzo Abe, while the rest of the world mourns for the death of the former Japanese Prime Minister. Chinese internet users offer cruel comments, nightclubs celebrate his death, and businesses offer discounts. We discuss why this is happening in China. I also speak with Ambassador Sam Brownback, former International Religious Freedom Ambassador for the United States. We discuss how Americans at a state and local level can advocate for human rights in China and other authoritarian nations. His thoughts on human rights and religious freedom matching up to the economy or national security, including how national security can intersect with religious freedom. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. Chinese nationals on the internet and some local businesses are celebrating the death of Shinzo Abe, who is the former Japanese prime minister, as he was assassinated on Friday. The news of the assassination quickly spread across Chinese social media. Before his death was even announced on Friday, at one point, nine out of the 10 top searches on Weibo, which is China's version of Twitter, had something related to Abe's eventual passing. Meanwhile, a song titled Unfortunately Not You by Malaysian singer Fish Long got banned from searches on Chinese social media, prompting the discussion that a Japanese leader was assassinated and somehow the life of the Chinese leader is now being discussed. Well, banned from discussion. Because it alludes to the wishing that the Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping would die instead. After the song got banned, any song's title related to Why Isn't It You, You're Next, Finally It's You, As Long As It's You Later, or Eventually It Will Be You, are being used instead of the Unfortunately Not You song. The hate, however, got even worse over the weekend, as nightclubs put up Abe's memorial photo as a part of the celebration of his death, and another here with the words Good Day written on the side. This one came from an American Idol-like program in China. These images and videos are shocking to everybody. Except for the Chinese internet, I guess. And this got even more ridiculous as Chinese citizens seems to be the only nation or citizens of a nation that's celebrating the death of Shinzo Abe. Even the officials in Beijing are drawing back on their happiness. Xi Jinping even wrote a message to send his condolence to the family of the former prime minister and of Japan. Some merchants and store owners in China are even offering the buy one get one for free deal or cash back on purchases to celebrate this death in China. And this one offers a 20% discount. And there are even some people using face swap apps to change solemn Japanese anchors announcing his death into happy expressions online. Of course, the assassination of Shinzo Abe so far still remains much of a mystery. The assassin says he disliked Abe and his policies, according to Reuters. The killer is a Japanese self-defense Navy veteran, and he taped together a homemade gun using some type of ammunition and shot the prime minister twice. Now, the news that Japan lost Shinzo Abe has actually shocked Americans too, and actually everybody around the world. Abe's policies dramatically transformed Japan and the Indo-Pacific as we know it during his dawn tenure as Prime Minister, the longest serving Prime Minister since the end of World War II actually. Now getting equal attention is of course the fact that uh, only Chinese netizens and internet users are celebrating the death of Shinzo Abe. This is drawing both criticism and anger toward the Chinese populace. But is this actually just the fault of the Chinese people hating Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and their innocent government had nothing to do with it? Not quite. This is a video of an interview with a young boy. Here he says he got a nosebleed from his, his hatred of the Japanese people when he was just four years old. The interviewer asked if he's ever seen a Japanese person before. He says no. So what gives? A four-year-old boy can hate the Japanese so much that he got a nosebleed without ever even seeing a Japanese person, ever. Where did this hatred come from? Well, the answer is the Chinese Communist Party. Even as they try to distance themselves from the behaviors of the Chinese people here amid Shinzo Abe's death, this is actually the reality that they want the Chinese people to be doing the, the, the reaction, the extreme behaviors. They want that from the Chinese people. They want to see them riled up over the death of a Japanese person let alone the former Prime Minister of Japan. So let's break this down a little bit. Of course, the history of Japan invading China during World War II has been essentially used to fuel further nationalistic rage toward Japan in recent decades. 
The Chinese regime has used it to propagandize Japan's war crimes in China and the ever struggle against the Japanese population. And that has become a top priority for the CCP. This can manifest as, say, boycotting Japanese products, demonizing Japan, and such. And what the CCP does is called the Great Internal Propaganda on Japan. It is to fuel as much rage as possible against a single group, in this case, the Japanese, which is to gain control of what people think about and when it comes to Japan, almost like conditioning them by association. There's a famous study in the, during the Soviet era where they trained a dog to salivate every time there was a bill. This conditioning, the social conditioning, some people call it a cognitive warfare, actually is how the CCP and even the Nazis have conditioned, say, the Jewish population to be hated by the Germans at the time using propaganda and other social conditioning purposes in order for them to justify the Holocaust and eventually any killing or murdering of the Jewish population. Essentially, the idea is to demonize them into becoming less than human in the eyes of the Germans, but now the Chinese population for Japan. Hence why, when the rest of the world offers condolence to Japan for the death of Abe, China stands out as the lone nation essentially celebrating. What exactly has Shinzo Abe done to make China hate him so much? Well, Shinzo Abe can be defined by a variety of achievements, both inside Japan and around the world. First, he is the father of the Quad Security Dialogue concept, which the US, India, Japan, and Australia are a part of, as well as what the Biden administration always says, free and open Indo-Pacific is actually also a term that came from Shinzo Abe. Abe is a strong supporter of Taiwan, calling for the island's defense against China to be strengthened. And not only that, Shinzo Abe has tried to change the constitution in Japan, where in the Article 9 says it currently prohibits Japan from having a full-fledged military force following their defeat in World War II. Abe has been pushing for Japan to become a nation with a full military power to defend itself, as well as, for example, Taiwan, against the threat of communist China. Though he was criticized for pushing ahead of his time on aggressive military agenda and reforms, it in fact proves that he is correct in seeing China as the main threat in Asia. He is in fact a very anti-communist leader from Japan. Also, with his 2013 economic policies known as Abenomics, the strategy had three arrows aimed at uh, kickstarting economic growth and higher wages in Japan, and a loose monetary policy as well as fiscal stimulus and structural economic reforms, which actually helped rescue Japan out of the economic recession and brought the economy back to its foot. The liberal media is actually calling Abe a arc conservative or just conservative in general. Abe also recognized the threat of communist China very early on, even during the Bush administration. He called for an alliance very early on for East Asia and North America against the common threat, which was China. And he also advocated for a stronger Japan, both militarily and abroad. Becoming close ally with the United States is one of the key steps. As he improved relationship with the United States, we now have a staunch ally in East Asia, being able to defend the interest of the United States out far here in the East, as well as serving as a forward base component to the United States International Military, as well as its Blue Water Navy. Now, when it comes to the relationship with South Korea, it's essentially strengthened as well under Abe with uh, the purpose to deter North Korea. He also overlapped with many U.S. presidents, such as George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump. Abe stepped down as prime minister a couple years ago for medical reasons, uh, but was very still much involved in Japan's policy making, as well as his family's political influence is still very much a big aspect of the Liberal Democratic Party, which is the ruling majority party. Now, in other words, Shinzo Abe really transformed Japan as a nation in the time he was prime minister, which is now a nation of great prosperity, of rather strong military for its purposes as a self-defense force, and perhaps the most important for us, which is the closest ally to the United States in Asia. Of course, a staunch defender of Taiwan as well. All in all, it causes this Chinese regime to think and essentially hate Shinzo Abe as an enemy of the communist goal in Asia, and this is why his death is essentially celebrated in China. Now, the reason why we can actually see what's going on in China on their Chinese social media or on their Chinese internet in general is because of a great movement called hashtag the great translation movement what it does is it takes 
Very popular messages, comments, or even videos or text in China translates them into English or other languages. That gets very much disseminated for the Chinese populace, and now we can see what they're talking about. So essentially, they're taking the great internal propaganda that the Chinese Communist Party puts out for its people, and then translates them into languages that we understand, and to see what exactly is going on inside China. What what are they telling their people? So the Chinese regime is very much afraid of this idea of translating what they're teaching and what they're telling their own people, so that we could understand how much they really hate us. So the Chinese Communist Party uses these so-called independent media to disseminate state propaganda, right? And then because they're being translated into, say, English and other languages, it exposes the regime for what it really is, which is that the Chinese Communist Party, first of all, hates Japan. But also, they hate America just as much as Japan, if not more. And so here we can really break down some of the comments we've seen in recent days, just regarding the Shinzo Abe's death. For example, here. So after the news broke out, one comment says, "Who is this hero?" referring to the killer of Shinzo Abe. And another one says, "Feel happier than Chinese New Year." Someone else says,、uh, "Hope the gun is okay, or that the, the assassin's marksmanship isn't good and should have aimed for the head of Shinzo Abe." This type of behavior by Chinese netizens also happened during 9/11 in 2001. The ugliest side of the CCP has shown itself online through the messages of extreme reactions that we're seeing here. It reminds me of a German author named Friedrich Reich Malasheiwen, and、uh, he wrote a diary during the Nazi Reich called "The Diary of a Man in Despair." He described Nazi nationalism as quote a state of mind in which you do not love your own country as much as you hate somebody else's. Meaning, if you don't hate another country or another thing more, you don't love your country enough. If this is the view from an author who's lived through the Third Reich, then we can say that in the Chinese Communist regime, if you don't hate to the extreme of someone the party has defined as an evil person, you are not loyal enough to your party. In other words, you're basically a treasonous criminal to the entire Communist Party. So we can see that、uh, the CCP has once again decimated our view of what is the bottom line. Even as human beings, expressing condolence and sympathy at this time is normal of what a human behavior should be. But in the Chinese society today, millions of people in China unknowingly gave up their values as human beings to essentially take up the values of the Chinese Communist Party. Of course, not everyone has the same reaction and extreme. Happiness as these we've seen online, but given the censorship and、uh, the Chinese regime essentially controlling what goes online, those voices remain low and invisible. The celebration of Shinzo Abe's death is years in the making, as we just discussed. Building on the rage against the Japanese population, the exposure of the celebration is actually a real reflection of what the Chinese regime actually wants the Chinese people to think and do, which is to hate Japan, celebrate Shinzo Abe's death. And to promote anti-Japanese sentiments on the web, now the Chinese government often makes the excuse that、uh, the so-called extreme behaviors we observe on the internet doesn't actually reflect the viewpoint of the CCP. But we know that that's a whole lie. The entire internet environment in China is heavily controlled by the CCP. If they didn't want you to see these type of messages stay up, then it would be long gone already. In other words, these extreme rhetorics are, in fact, the exact same thing that the CCP is thinking about. Of course, the shock around the world that an assassin can get so close to Abe is bringing questions to the security detail. How can a leader be killed just like that? Well, it turns out Japan has actually gotten so used to peacetime in a country with less than ten gun-related violence per year that. Its alertness of this situation has deteriorated, and it's also been more than 60 years since a political assassination has ever taken place in Japan. The last one was about 62 years ago. In fact, it was Shinzo Abe's maternal grandfather, former Prime Minister Nobusuke Kishi, who was attacked by a knife-wielding assailant, but he survived. It is also a norm for politicians in Japan to campaign very closely to the voters on the streets, and as laws prohibit the wide use of campaign videos, television broadcasts, and such, manual efforts such as this are actually quite common. But I think the relaxed security may be changing after the assassination. Now, as to the concern about the American-Japanese relationship that could face certain tests, I don't think it will, and the impact is going to be much less than what some might believe. Here's why. 
First, the legacy of Shinzo Abe will be magnified and even pushed forward faster than expected under current Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, who, despite having some differences in the way that they see Japan, is still in line with many of Shinzo Abe's policies and vision. For example, Abe advocating for the change to the constitution to give more freedom to the self-defense force or to create a pseudo-freedom to the Japanese military strength could actually be happening sooner. And or in fact that the Japanese and its alliances could also get stronger and closer to advance further shared values like free and open Indo-Pacific. This could also push more people to accept Abe's forward thinking on China and on national security in Japan. Second, the death of Abe could be seen as a turning point toward nationalism for Japan in the showdown of violence versus nationalism, where Abe's stances resulted in his death. This could further push people to actually accept, especially the Japanese population, to embrace Abe's values and legacy and all the while feeling more nationalism in Japan, elevating to a fight for democracy versus authoritarianism when we project that outward toward Asia and China. And third, the extreme hate and laughter from the Chinese media and social media that can actually be reflected negatively on the Japanese population. As they may see China laughing at the tragedy in, in Japan, this might dramatically change their view of China in Japan. And fourth, as the impact of Abe's political party expands amid new elections, it could ensure Japanese Prime Minister Kishida's agenda for the next few years ride out smoothly including Abe's advocacy to protect Taiwan, and this could well translate into a long-term shift in Japanese politics, something we could watch for. And thank you so much for watching today. This is a China Insider. I'm David Zhang. We'll see you next time.